there was a point in life, um, I think I was 14, 15, my dad tried to kill me. He stabbed me. Welcome to an episode of Find Your Voice, a movement led by yours truly, Aaron Dew, a guy who has overcome crippling anxiety, adversity, and difficulty like so many of you in life, whose main goal now is to help you combat your excuses, take control of your life, write your own story, and most importantly, find your voice. So now, without further ado, I welcome the host of the show himself, Mr. Aaron Dew. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Find Your Voice. My name is Aaron, and as always, I am the host of the show. So I'm delighted to finally be back on Find Your Voice. I've had a bit of a sabbatical myself, been away for the best part of a month, but I'm so excited because we're going to kick things off with an incredible guest, which I'm sure you're going to get so much value from today. So we just had a brief conversation, and obviously you've heard a bit of the introduction that I've just given prior to the show but I think it's important now to obviously welcome her to the show. So Sway Jitty, is that a correct pronunciation? It's like the car, GT. GT, even better. Sounds, yes. sounds, that sounds really <laughs> great. So we've got Sway GT on today's episode. So Sway, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you so much, Erin. You are amazing. Thank you so much for your energy. It's, it's an amazing pleasure to be here and to be joined in this conversation. I'm doing absolutely amazing even though i've had a tough day at the beginning i'm doing really well now thank you you're very welcome you're very welcome well i'm excited to have you on especially kicking off things because i think it's been a very tough three four months for many people across the world and that's without just the normal adversity that many of us go through in life and i know yourself your story there is a lot of trials and tribulations and you've really been at the bottom but it's so nice to see your energy actually so we're speaking live looking at each other and you're infectious in terms of the energy that you bring. I've looked at some of the work that you're doing as well, but it hasn't always been nice. It hasn't always been great. And the way that you are now showing up because there has been darker days. So what I want to know is, and it's always something that I'm always curious about is why people do what they do. So a little bit about yourself, if you wouldn't mind a little bit about your story. And then if you can lead us into the things that you are actually doing today, please. Okay. So get geared up because this is a really long story, but I'm trying to keep it short. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I usually tell every time someone asks me this, I usually tell them that where I am right now, I'm simply just an entrepreneur with a huge heart for mental health. Why is because I am a trauma survivor myself. I went through domestic violence for most of my childhood and my abuser were my abusers were my parents. My mother was the mental abuser and my father was the physical abuser. And after that, when there was a point in life, um, I think I was 14, 15. I was, my dad tried to kill me. He stabbed me. And something switched in me that day because when that incident was going on, I shut down because I felt like, okay, you know what? Now I'm going to die. I'm going to finally leave all of this. And that's it. I don't have to go through any of this, but the stabbing just kept going on and on and on. And when my father realized there's no reaction coming out of me because I didn't want to give him, I didn't want to give it to him. I didn't want to give him that pleasure of seeing me in pain. I just sat there in the corner bleeding and I just waited for the next thing to unfold. Right after that, my mother who was just standing there and watching all of this happen, she just, she spoke for the first time for like, I think for after 20 minutes or 30 minutes of that incident going on, she spoke with the first time and she's like, she needs to go to the hospital. And my dad started going like, no, if she goes to the hospital, they'll know it's me. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, you guys really have the time and the energy to be thinking and arguing about if I get to go to the hospital, if my life is worth it. In the end, they came to the you know conclusion that I will be going to the hospital, but as long as I keep my mouth shut about what happened. And it, it's interesting because my mom did drive me to the hospital, but she never came in. I went to the ER section myself and I lied for them. And that was the last straw. That was the last time I lied for the family that I thought were my family. And I decided, you know what, this is it. I'm going to lie for them. And it felt so horrible to do that, but it taught me such a huge lesson that family shouldn't hurt this much. Loving people, respecting people shouldn't hurt this much. And I shouldn't be in 
in the pain that I was in, I couldn't see, I still have a scar here that reminds me on my left eye um, of what happened. And I look at it every day in the morning. Now it's a motivation for me, but I was just 15, you know, waking up to that at that time was horrible. I left home a year after that and I never looked back since then. I was homeless for three months. And luckily the time that I left, it was also the time that I went into university. Um, so I grew up in UK. I went to university of Cambridge and I was, I was really like, I was really scared if I was going to get in because of everything that was going with me. And if I was going to be able to handle the stress, you know, of going to the university. So the first three months going to a university like that and being homeless was an anxious period for me. I couldn't tell anyone, not my lecturers, not my classmates. I couldn't tell anyone that I was homeless for the first three months. And the funny thing at that time, at that period was that I was so resilient because I didn't want to go back home. Nobody was searching for me because the last time I got a call when they did know that I wasn't, I wasn't planning to come back was that this is a lesson for you that you're not going to go anywhere in life without us. And I really desperately wanted to prove them wrong. Even if that meant being on the streets for three months, I was willing to do that. I had enough money saved up, I think, to pay my first year tuition fees and also to have food, but I didn't have enough money to rent a place out. So, you know, the lecture rooms, I would just sleep at the back of it and nobody would find out. And when I was ready to tell people, I already had arrangements made. I was already working at a part-time job as um, an assistant teacher in a nursery. And I made enough money that I could tell people comfortably, you know, I was homeless. I wasn't proud of it, but it taught me a lesson. And now I don't want you to think of me, you know, just because of whatever I went through. I want you to think of me of where I am right now. I went through all of that. I was at the top of my class, despite it all. And I want to be able to take that away whenever I told them this story. Um, ever since then, it's just been going upwards. I've seen darker days, you know, even past that, but I've, I've been able to tune in to the opportunities those dark days brought me. And I think that's the important thing that I've learned through it all. Wow. What an amazing story. So I had no idea that's where this story was going to go. And I'm so grateful and thankful that you've just shared that because I think you just hit the main question that was in my head in terms of your perspective on everything that you've been through and it's you're seeing the opportunities. Now, in terms of you saw me writing a lot of notes there, I can't comprehend how any individual, let alone a parent, could do that to their child, especially at the age of 15. And I have so many questions, if I may just delve ever so slightly into that. Of course. Because I'm, I'm just thinking maybe a listener may be thinking the same question. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to know is, you mentioned that you were receiving physical abuse from your father and emotional abuse from your mother. Mm -hmm. When I heard that story there and your mom stood there for 20 minutes and she's not really saying anything until afterwards when it's kind of clicked that actually we need to take my child to hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was her abuse in terms of emotional more of a fear of your father or was she just her own person who just abused you in a separate way as well? Or was there an underlying fear of the way that your father would react? Okay, so... I've learned today and after everything happened and I moved on in life, I learned that my mom had her own trauma, which is why people project what they can't heal. That's, that's the main thing. And I want, I want you to keep this in mind while I explain. I come from two different worlds. I'm a mixed race child. Uh, my father is Asian and my mom is Arab. It's two separate worlds. Uh, they come from two different religions and my mom through my mom went through a lot of trauma in her time. Her family actually outcasted her when she decided to marry my father. And my father's family didn't really treat her that well when they first got married. In fact, when um, in my father's culture, having a girl wasn't really a good thing. So when she was pregnant, she went through a lot of physical trauma, uh, physical abuse um, and mental abuse herself when she was pregnant with me. So she never got to deal with any of that because my father would keep manipulating her. And I say this today with very, with a lot of confidence because I didn't have the confidence to say this, to like really pick that point. 
My father, on the other hand, went through his own emotional abuse growing up. His parents were just strict. Um, his mom, um, she was Spanish, so I'm quarter Spanish. She was a lovely woman, but her, his father was this, you know, almost like a Hitler, you know? He would just want to mold anyone in his perception. And that's what my father had to become. And he, it was like, he almost didn't have the choice to love, almost didn't have the choice to do what he wanted in life. And when he did find love with my mom, it became distorted. It became distorted because of what she was going through, her own pain with her family throwing her out, what he was going through with her, having to choose between this comfortability, this familiarity that he already had with his family, even though it was, it was dysfunctional. You know, people become comfortable in uncomfortable situations because that's their safe spot. They don't want to know if I cross this boundary, if I just let go of the situation and find something else, they're, they're scared of that unknown. And my father was in that stage. So going through all of that, their relationship became really, the best word I can say is unhealthy. And they started projecting that on me. My father started having a drinking problem and um, every, and I remember this so particularly, my mother's mental and emotional abuse towards me was more like, you know what? You can live your life, but you also have to live your life a certain way. You have to be grateful that we got you into this world, no matter what we do to you. So I remember every time it was my birthday, I wouldn't be allowed to go and spend it with anyone else, even though that day is supposed to just be for me and, you know, for me to like be happy. I wasn't allowed to because every time it was my birthday, my mom would be like, you know what, I'm going to tell you the story of what happened to me, what happened to your father and what we went through to make sure you get life. It was a lot to take in because this started the abuse, the emotional and the physical abuse started like at a very young age. Um, I think the first time I was absolutely like aware of it was maybe 10. I was 10 years old. I was like, oh my God, I don't think any of this, what's happening to me is right. I shouldn't be going through this. So to answer your question, it, it was, it was what she went through. It was what he went through that they projected because they did not get the help. They didn't know that they needed help. It was just that they were so, they were so hurt by their own realities of the past and the present that it made it difficult for them to have, you yeah. know, yeah, any sort of connection with me. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and that's actually the, the reason I asked the question. So it's very, it could be very easy for me to just sit here now and just point blame on your parents and I'm not taking anything away from what they did because it's, it's unacceptable. So there is a, a level of accountability there, but there was a great quote and I heard this years ago and it was hurt people, hurt people. And this is why I kind of asked the question because you can see now having you, you explain that with your now new level of awareness that they were hurt people who didn't know how to break the cycle. And one thing I find fascinating about yourself is you could have repeated that same cycle. You could have became another version of your mother or another version of your father. And I'm just so grateful that somewhere, somehow you've managed to heal from that trauma and no longer are going out of your way to hurt people. Instead, you're trying to heal people. And I always believe, what, and I don't know the answer for this, and I'm not sure if you know the answer or if somebody else knows the answer, that you have a choice in that moment where you can just keep repeating the cycle or you can actually say, my hardship has taught me to do things better. Yeah. And this is what this podcast is about. It's about we can't choose the cards that we're dealt with. And just hearing you go through that trauma is horrible. And I think anyone listening to this with a bit of compassion, that they'll feel that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also a blessing. And I mean this respectfully that we've got somebody like yourself now who's came out the other side now, who now has a choice and is now trying to heal other people. So um, that was one of the main reasons I really wanted to share that. And I'm, I'm so <laughs> grateful for your answer. But I have so many other questions okay. if, if, if I may continue just with that as well. No problem. Because I think this might be an Asian thing. Again, I'm not sure of other cultures as well. Especially when you're little, there's almost like you have to have this sense of gratitude that you're here in the world. And it's, yeah, yeah. you can be whatever you want to be, but there are rules and there are you know yeah. caveats to everything. And this is one of the reasons Find Your Voice is what it is. It's about finding your voice. It's about at one stage in your life, you have to shut off the noise what your teachers say, what your parents say, what your siblings say, and you have to find 
who you are as a person. Yeah. So that, that was a really interesting point. And then I just want to congratulate you because you went to Cambridge University, which if anyone in the UK, well, anyone in the world knows, it's one of the, <laughs> one of the top, top universities. And to go through that after what you've been through and then also homeless, you mentioned as well, that's absolutely inspiring beyond belief. And it just shows the incredible resilience and the, and the power that you hold um, as a lady. I just find it I find it fascinating. I didn't think this conversation was going to go this way. You honor me. You honor me, Aaron. Your words, um, you know, till date. Um, so I'm right now, what I do is basically I'm a therapist and a coach, but I'm, I wear a lot of hats. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I do a lot out there, but till date, you know, when people tell me what they tell me when I tell my story, I'm still in the healing process. And I think this is so important. Healing is never done. It's never done. I'm still healing. Yes, I'm thankful that today I am, uh, you know, I'm in a healthy relationship. I've broken those vicious circles and um, I have good things going on in my life. But it's very important to remember because there's this one thing that you said that, uh, you know, we, the cultural bounds that we have growing up it's very important to remember that even on the dark days even in those bad moments we have to look for the opportunities and i don't think i would have this resilience if i wasn't aware that you know what the universe aligns in a way that there's you know just like a coin there are two faces to every situation two faces to every single situation and for me when it began I was extremely hurt, but during the end, I started looking at what have I really learned from this? And it was the fact that I was missing that knowledge, the knowledge that what did I really learn from this? I didn't have an answer as a 16 year old. I didn't have an answer like why and what, what was the why and what? That is what drove me to pick up psychology. That is what drove me to do what I do today and help people because it's, it's, it's so important that once you're aware, you pick, you find, you find that knowledge that's going to answer all your questions. And it doesn't even have to be like, you know, specific questions, but if it answers that broader question that you have in your mind, you immediately get reassured and you know that I'm, I'm, I'm meant to, I, I went through that for a reason. And that reason is going to play a bigger card, a bigger role tomorrow. Absolutely. So, yeah. I love that. I love the why and the what. I think that's a great exercise that any of us can use. And I try and do that as well. And I've heard it from somebody else. It's not something that I've invented myself. But when I'm going through adversity, it's always what is life or what am I being taught in this moment here? Or what am I going to gain from this experience where I'm scared or I'm hurt or I'm going through something? And that lesson only really shows up in hindsight, but I encourage people in that moment to really look at the why and the what, because I think that is really, really important. And I want to mm -hmm. ask you then, I want to kind of put you on the spot a little bit, if I may. And okay. I fully respect that healing is never done. And I, and I agree with that. I think it's a process and it, it can get easier. You know, you can have techniques, mm -hmm. mechanisms and stuff in place. But for somebody maybe listening to this now who may have gone through something similar or, or just going through their own sort of trauma, what are the mm -hmm. first initial steps that you would at least recommend if we just say maybe two things that anyone like on a generic surface, because obviously you need to know specifics to really delve in, could just kind of work on themselves to start that process of healing. So the first two things that I would say, the first most is that you have to stop taking the fact that, because it's not a fact, it's an opinion and it's a core belief. You know, the core belief is that the validation that we get from the external world that we live in is what is reflected on the inner world. And what I mean by that is that, so for example, if our parents say that you're not going to be anything without us, family is the most important thing, this, that, these are opinions, opinions created over layers and layers and layers of, you know, the structural build of society. We have to understand the only validation and acknowledgement that matters is our own. So to build, you know, to break that core belief of the external world's validation and acknowledgement, we need to find a safe space when we're going through things like this. For me, my safe space, it was very simple. It was my music and it was my writing. I was extremely talented. And today I'm proud to say that, but 
at that age with everything that I was going through, I was really overlooking my talents. I was a self-taught pianist, um, keyboardist, lyric writer, like name it. I, I could do so many things, but I was, I would just keep, keep on saying that, you know what, it doesn't matter even if I'm talented because ABC is going on in my life and ABC is what really identifies me. So what happens is that during this time, to start your healing process, you need to find your safe space. Because if you don't find your safe space, which could be anything, just do two things in life and during that you know timeline, two things that make you feel like you can express yourself. Some people p- pick up MMA, you know, they go boxing. Some people pick up music. Some people pick up writing. But you have to find that outlet where you're speaking to yourself. You're doing something that you really enjoy. Because in that moment... You're constantly thinking. Our brain is constantly working. So when we're doing those activities in in our safe space, we're talking to ourselves. We keep thinking like, okay, what's the probability that this is going to continue in my life for the next 20 years? And you will find out that it's probably not going to last for the next 20 years. It'll probably end way earlier than that because you will start working now. Okay, the probability says no. Why, Why do I think no? You know, let me dig deeper on why I'm responding to this answer is no. Why do I think that I won't be suffering this for the next 20 years? As you go on, you start to peel your layers within that self-expression and that outlet. It becomes your safe space. So what you're doing is that your inner child and your shadow self. So shadow self is the, the, the aspect of us that really, um, that does the negative things that we don't admit our anger, our frustration, um, our use of abusive language, anything negative about us, our jealousy, our greed, that's what the shadow self is all about. Our inner child is, let's say, at a point in life for me, for example, 10 till 15 is the times that I really remember my abuse. That period of time, I didn't have my childhood. I had to become a survivor. So I missed out on my childhood. So my inner child is hurting. To find the balance when you're healing, you need to find the balance between your shadow self. So it doesn't, you have to appreciate your shadow self because sometimes when we get angry, sometimes when we're jealous, it's showing us signs that we need to be better. It's showing us signs that we need to do something about that behavior or that thought pattern. And it also shows us that our inner child lacked that. Why are we angry about the situation or the relationship that we're in right now? Maybe because we didn't have that comfort and reassurance when we were a kid. Why are we jealous? Because we're seeing other people making more money. Probably because we didn't live a comfortable life as our inner child. We had to go through a lot of, you know, things then that that shouldn't have happened for like a kid. So once you start doing that first step, which is the outlet, you start answering a lot of your own questions. The second thing is, is to keep remembering that you need to ground yourself. You need to find things that you can be grateful about in your life. Yes, I went through a bad childhood, but there were things that I was happy about. I was alive. I was breathing. I had a bed. I I had friends. I, I couldn't talk to them much about, it, about what I was going through, but I had friends that I could talk about my similar interests about. I was getting fresh water. I could eat. Things I had, I had a voice that people liked. I could dance. I like the simple, small things. And I had a dog. I was grateful for my dog. It's the mix of these two, finding the good things in your life when you're going through something bad. It really, really recharges you because you need to recharge your emotions and your energy every day. And that's what happens when you heal. You're constantly recharging. So the next day, whatever you're about to go through, because you're a survivor, whatever you're about to go through, you're ready for that. You don't have yesterday's emotions and energy that are sort of tying you down to what happened yesterday. You're ready for the new day. So I would say those two things, finding your safe space and finding things to be grateful about. That's fantastic. What a, what a fantastic answer. Thank you for sharing that. And I think there was a lot of things you were saying there and you, and you could see me nodding uh, as you were saying it because... I've done similar stuff myself in terms of finding my voice, for example, and expressing myself. It is the podcast. It is my YouTube videos, which I just create because I love creating them. Whether people watch them or not, that's entirely a different subject because I do it for me. 
And also you mentioned MMA. Well, I do, I choose to do boxing and the gym and that's kind of my expression from a physical aspect as well. And then you mentioned the shadow self and initially I was thinking, well, that's just negative. Why would you want to find a balance? But then it makes sense because there's almost healing required there as well. So that's really, really fantastic advice. And I think, especially with the grounding yourself in terms of being grateful, so often when we're going through adversity, we forget the simple things. We forget the the simple fact that we are alive, that we have problems such as the internet not working, for example, that we moan about, we complain about. And that is just such a first world problem. And having that kind of experience then, and I'm sure you've been through more adversity as well that sadly you won't be able to cover on this episode. In this particular time now, knowing how resilient you are and how many things that you can potentially handle moving forward, what's your biggest fear? Myself. Hmm. I am fearful of myself. Um, I don't think there is anything in the world after everything that I've been through, mm -hmm. and I've been through quite a bit, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that can really hold me back. It's just me. It's just me and what's in my head. And if I can get a better control of that every day, which is, which is something I try desperately, mm -hmm. it could be the smallest things, you know, when, um, I have three successful businesses and I'm very happy about it, but sometimes I sell myself short. And when I do that, I am blocking my own path. So my biggest fear is myself because I am my biggest motivator, biggest inspirer and biggest competition. <laughs> and that's my internal world. For me, everything here matters first and then I'm going to pay heed to whatever is in my external world because the other factors are ever changing. We live in a world where there's constant evolution. We ourselves are constantly evolving. So we to adjust with the external world we really have to adjust with our inner world so for me like i said my biggest fear is myself i love that i love that it makes a lot of sense and i think so many people will resonate with that as well even myself actually now that you said it i'm probably my own worst enemy as much as my biggest fan as well exactly and it's finding that balance as well it's it's knowing yeah. when to criticize yourself because you've not been accountable towards the things that you're going to say but then it's also being kind to yourself on the times mm -hmm. where you, you need that kindness. And we mentioned at the yeah. start of the show, I've been so consistent with Find Your Voice since it came out 18 months ago now. And then the last month absolutely just fell off. And I fell off more for personal reasons. And mm -hmm. it was probably the hardest time I've been through personally in, in my 33 years. And there was the first week I was blaming myself. I was criticizing myself. I was having all these thoughts on how the listeners would view Find Your Voice, for example. And none of that actually came true. None of it was, fact. Yeah. again, it was just opinion. And it was only the latter three weeks where I started to be kind to myself that now I'm re-energized again, similar to what you were saying earlier. I'm, I'm ready yeah. for this episode. Like today, this is the first episode I've picked up in a month and I'm excited. It's been a great story, even though we've tackled some harsh stories as well. So hopefully there's a bit of a lesson in my ramblings there to anyone listening <laughs> that it's just to be kind to yourself and try and manage that. I call it the inner chimp because I read the chimp paradox a long, long time ago by Dr. Stephen mm. Pease. I think that's such a fantastic book and it kind of explains yeah. the way that we, uh, the way that we think about things in life. No, it's, it, you're absolutely right in whatever you said. And I don't think, I don't think there's anything else that matters first most other than the inner balance that we have, the balance that we have for ourselves, because if that's missing, you don't find balance in anything else. This is where I kind of talk about um, why I bring up the whole shadow self and inner child, because our shadow self is the one that keeps on, you know, making us feel like we can't do something or we shouldn't do something. It's the doubts and the doubts, then it kind of, um, which is, you know, kind of relates to the beliefs that we have because our core beliefs 80% of the times are not facts. They're opinions, opinions Absolutely. that we have for ourselves. So the opinions, knowing what an opinion means is actually that it can just, it can demolish tomorrow. You know, your beliefs, your core beliefs can demolish tomorrow, which is why it's so important to have that balance. So you weren't rambling. I think <laughs> <laughs> the core point is that you weren't rambling. I think everything that you've been through, and I'm so glad that you you feel so energetic about this episode because it's so important. I don't think you would have connected with me if you didn't take of time course. for yourself. Of course. So I'm glad that you did. I'm happy for you and I'm grateful for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
And before I continue rambling, we are going to just push the show on ever so slightly into what I call Sway, the fun part of the show. So we've been through the darker sides, but now we're going to just spruce things up ever so slightly. So I have a list in front of me here of the most random questions. All we require okay. from yourself is one word or one sentence answers only. So whenever you're ready, we're going to get started. So if you're committed to not only enhancing your mental health, but also your physical well-being too, then you need to check out our new sponsors, Health Excel. Providing you the best superfood blends on the market in their non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, and of course, organic formulas, they bring you superfoods like no others you have seen on the market. They also don't just stop there as they provide you free consistent information to educate and empower you on your overall health and well-being journey. So don't just stop at the end of a Find Your Voice episode. Get yourself some Excel blends and put the odds in your flavor. Once it goes live, there will also be a unique discount for anyone who comes from the Find Your Voice podcast as you guys are now part of my family and I only want to see you thrive even more. So check out the links in the description below and get notified as soon as they go live. Back to the episode. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, there's no pressure, don't worry. Okay, the first one is, what is your favorite hobby? Um, writing. What's the scariest thing you've ever done? Jump off a cliff. Fantastic. <laughs> What's the <laughs> biggest mistake you've made this year? Um, telling myself that opening another business is too much. Your proudest achievement? Wearing the pants sometimes in my relationship. <laughs> nice. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> Your favorite motivational speaker? Uh, I don't have one. I really don't. I okay. think... Every person I've come to, uh, come across has motivated me in some way or the other with their words. So I don't have a favorite. If you had an extra hour a day, how would you spend it? Hiking. I'd love to go hiking. The best lesson anyone has ever taught you. That's a difficult one. But I think the best lesson anyone's ever taught me is that things change and change is good. The one thing you have to do every single day. I really have to read my tarot cards. Interesting. What is your favorite book? Um, I do not, again, have a favorite. Um, but the one that's coming to my mind right now is called Cosmosis. I forgot the person who wrote it. But when I do remember the author's name, I will tell you. But the, word, but the name is Cosmos. I know that. Got it. Fantastic. And the next one's quite interesting because I know you have so many talents that you've mentioned on this episode as well. I'm sure people will find when they follow you. But what are you secretly good at that nobody knows? Um, um, um. I'm really good at cooking, but most people don't expect it. Love it. And finally, what song best describes your life? Uh, Cherry Bomb. Ch -ch 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 Cherry Bomb. The Runaways. I've not heard that. I've not Hello, heard that. <laughs> Daddy. Hello, Mom. I'm your ch -ch 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 Cherry Bomb. No? No, I've not heard that. No. And, oh and, and I'm sure God. that that sounded exactly like it as well. But <laughs> I, I need to up my music game. I will check that out, though. I will write that down. It's a really old. It's a really old song, but it's it's just so it's so packing. And I love the women in that. The women group was just so inspiring. <laughs> love it. Okay, so that is the end of the fun part of the show. And as we head towards the end of the show, there's just two more questions, if I may. So the next mm -hmm. question is about reflection. So I'm a firm okay. believer that hindsight is a wonderful thing. And we've, we've spoken about this in this episode today where we can always learn of ways to get to where we are quicker, easier, or maybe with less heartache as well. But I also believe mm -hmm. the journey teaches us so much as well. And that's important too as well. So what I want to know mm -hmm. is if you could maybe go back to a younger self, maybe when you were 10 to 15, when you said you really struggled with your childhood and you felt you, had, you didn't have one, and you could maybe whisper something in her ears, knowing everything that you know today, what would you say? It's not the end of the world. Nice and simple. I love that. And then sadly, that does bring us to the last question then. And the last question is about legacy, which I'm sure you're going to have a fantastic one. I hope so. I think if you stay out your own way, like you said, <laughs> your biggest fear, I think if you can just get that balance right, I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. But if in, say, 150 years time, science fails to save us and all that exists is a book and this book is about you, it's about your life. It's about all of the weird and wonderful and amazing things that you've accomplished throughout your life. Firstly, what I want to know is what would the title of this book be called? And secondly, what would the summary at the back tell us about you? The book would be called Hues of Her, which basically means shades of me. And um, it would be, the summary would be about how my life from the beginning to the end, because um, 
I see people in colors. So the book would be about my life, but in metaphorical sense with the rainbow colors. So each stage of my life would connect with the color, the meaning of the color and what that color represents in terms of qualities, in terms of whatever I was going through in life. So, yeah. Interesting. And um, when you said you see people in terms of a color, is that when you look at somebody, you see one color or would everyone be a rainbow as such? No. Uh, when I say that I see people in color, I, I, people, the people who believe in the spiritual world, they would call it an aura. But um, I think the right word is a sense that I, I have a hard word. I have a hard time pronouncing anything with asses. So, but basically there are people who see numbers around people. And then there's people who see colors around people. Usually I either see two colors or one color and it's overlapping the other to kind of really tell uh, what emotion they're going through or, you know, what behavior they're about to portray. That's what makes me, and it's my secret trick that I use with my clients to know like what they really need and want. <laughs> but yeah. Just putting you on the spot. Do you see any colors around me? It only works face to face. Face to face, understood. Yes, understood. yes. Fine. That makes sense. I have to feel, it's basically all about the energy and the frequency around you. So when I see you face to face, I can really see the colors that your frequency and your energy is really putting out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brilliant. So now is normally a chance where I give the listeners a chance to connect with yourself and maybe follow you on your journey and learn so much more about your wisdom as well. But just before we do that is there anything you wish i'd asked you today or maybe any final messages you want to leave the audience with um i think you asked me everything that you were meant to ask me in this podcast because i believe everything happens for a reason um but the last thing that i do want to say which i would have said to my younger self the world is not ending it's not the end of the world um you will be surprised how much can change within a very small you know span of time and we think about time so vastly, but in truth, time flies. It flies like no other. So you might be on this side of the grass today. You might be on the next side of the grass tomorrow. You just have to be open to that. So, yeah. Love that. Love that final message. And Sway, what is the best place or places that people can connect with you? Um, I'm usually on Instagram and LinkedIn. LinkedIn for more professional you know, networking, if you want to get in touch and know my professional side of me, Instagram, you'll find most of my, you know, podcasts, Polite by Savage. If you want to know more about the other businesses that I do, uh, my speaking stuff, if you want to check out my features on magazines, whatever it is, it's where I'm more friendly. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Sway Sings for Instagram and for LinkedIn, it's just Sway Dean GT. I love that. I love that. And what I will do for the audience is put all of those into the show notes as well. So please do check out Sway's social media handles and please do show us support as well. And let her know what you thought of this episode as well, because for myself, as you saw, I was writing notes throughout all of this because I've learned so much. And this is one of the benefits and my own selfish pursuit of Find Your Voices. I always get to learn from people like yourself, which hopefully then helps me not just find my voice, but become a better person as well. So Sway, I just want to take this moment to thank you I'm not sure where you're, where you're based right now. Is it in Cambridgeshire? Or Dubai. UK? Dubai, right. So from the other side of the world. Yeah. And thank you obviously <laughs> for taking time out of your day to come on to find your voice and share your story. No, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so honored to be here. You're very, very welcome. And I also want to thank every single person at home. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, this podcast is absolutely free. So all we ask in return is for you to share this with a friend and drop us a five-star review over on iTunes. Have an awesome day. And we're done. And I just pressed the wrong button right at the end. But <laughs> it's all right. it's I've been okay. out of practice for so long. It's okay. That was so wonderful. You, you, The questions you asked were amazing. They were very insightful. I think uh, as a listener, I would really like to know those. So you, ha you have a great insight.